Hi, I'm Cheryl Brunette, and today I'm going to share the beautiful daughter Afghan with you. Just last month, I successfully completed a Kickstarter campaign to build a studio for video and fiber arts on my property. And at the very end of that campaign, a generous donation came in from a member of my knitting community. And when I contacted the person who gave that pledge, um, this is the reply that I got. I thanked her and this was the reply I got. Hey Cheryl, I decided to back you knowing that you deserve it. Know that you have helped me so much with my knitting. I live in such and such a country and I am 18 and I have saved up the large amount of money for something good and I know you are really worth it. My mom has stage for liver, lung, and colon cancer, and I want to give her a really soft afghan or blanket of some sort to cover her since she lost so much weight, she always feels cold. Please can you help me with this? I know it's a lot to ask from you to make one, but can you consider it? If you're really busy, can you send me a pattern and tell me what I need to have? Well, I haven't made anything um, sort of on spec or for other people besides my family and friends in over 30 years but this somehow spoke to my heart so I said yes and this is the result it is ready to go out probably later this afternoon or tomorrow and I want to share the process with you that I went through in order to create it it had to be soft. It had to be not too huge. It needed to be a natural fiber. That was my requirement. Big box um, acrylics are good for a lot of different projects, but they weren't good enough for this project. This needed to be more of a luxury fiber and it needed to be machine washable and dryable. So that was a lot of, oh, oh and it needed to be at least worsted weight yarn because I needed to finish it pretty quickly. As it turns out, this is actually the second one I started, but the only one that I finished. So let's look closely at the pattern. This is the second attempt to make an afghan. I started the first one on the machine. I had ordered this yarn, mail order. It is machine washable and dryable. It is um, mostly wool, a little bit of acrylic, and it was sold to me as worsted weight. But let me tell you, this is not my concept of what worsted weight should look like. And I will be doing a separate video on this because there are certain perils in ordering yarn by the internet or by mail order. So I went downtown to Port, in Port Townsend and I went right to the yarn shop and I found this. I said, okay, I can do it by hand. I can lie down and do it. This is Cascade 128 Superwash. And it's in the colors that the beautiful daughter said her mother liked. This is, a, this is um, just a gorgeous periwinkle. It's a little bit heathered and it has sort of an icy blue in it and then bits of lavender that you can see. It was, it was like knitting with butter. It is 100% wool superwash merino wool and um, it was just a delight to work with. This has been machine washed and dried already. If there is any problem with this it is the fact that it pills really badly and that is one of the things that, you know it's a trade-off. Because it is such a soft spin then it, <laughs> oh shoot I, for, I, I had a little um, a little thing of the fuzz of it that came off in the dryer when I dried it. I only dried it, it says to dry it, tumble cool. So I tumbled it for a little while cool and then I um, tumbled it for maybe five minutes on gentle in the warm, uh, the least warm temperature and then I took it out and laid it over my sweater dryer. But it, 
It has nice resilience to it. It really is a lovely yarn. If softness is really an important thing to you, do not rely on all yarns of this brand and this type being as soft as this. You really need to feel it because different dyes combine differently chemically with the fibers and they can make the feel of the yarn be very different. So that was one thing I learned, that it needed to be, um, I needed to feel it before I did anything to it. And another thing for me is that it had, had to be interesting, right? It was going to be, because it's an afghan, I wanted it to lie flat, and it, which means I had to combine knits and pearls. And so I went digging through my, let's see, my second treasury of knitting patterns by Barbara Walker, and I found this one. And I thought, boy, that is a really interesting one. I tend to be kind of tailored and linear, and so that was the pattern that I used. <laughs> well, that was actually, notice that she has, um, that was a pattern stitch that I used. She has it written out like that. I don't work from that sort of thing. That's a little bit too tedious for me. I know how to work from that, but I find it tedious. So this, whoops, upside down. This is my whole knitting pattern. I took, see that little line there? And see, let's see, that across there. That is actually the pattern as she described it. It is, how many stitches? I think it's 12 stitches wide and uh, plus two. And I added two stitches to the edge so that it would be symmetrical at both sides. And it's 18, 18 rows long. And I added an extra two rows down here, too. Again, so it would be symmetrical at the top and the bottom. I, um, I just replicated what was up there. And I just worked until it was big enough. One of the things I like about this, and this was very deliberate for me, is notice that because of these ridges, when you work um, a garter stitch ridge or a reverse stock and knit stitch, stitch it's reverse stock and knit stitch. Right here, notice how it puffs out. That gives some loft to this pattern. And that was important to me because that will capture more heat for her without adding more weight. Um, another thing I had to pay attention to, and this was the bind off, is that I wanted it to be really stretchy because this does have considerable stretch to it. And um, it will be... It's not enough stretch that I would consider it sloppy. You know, like sometimes yarn or, or patterns will just stretch and stretch and the yarn, it's sort of shapeless. It isn't that. And there's a danger with this particular yarn that it could be kind of shapeless because it is so soft. But this particular pattern stitch gives it enough um, resilience that it holds its shape really well. I, I mean, this, this is after it was washed and dried and I had to be brave to do that. I couldn't believe I could wash it in my machine. My machine. I have a front loading machine and I washed it on gentle. It went all the way through the cycle. I did use cold water. It suggests that you can use warm, but I don't have warm out at my laundry shed. And I added my regular laundry detergent, which has no, um, perfumes or anything else in it. It's an, an eco kind of detergent. And I also used some, a little bit of white vinegar in the wash and in the rinse. I'm very pleased with the result. I am delighted to send it. This has been one of the most heartfelt projects that I've done in a long time. And um, I did it with gratitude and with intention and sending good thoughts to the beautiful daughter's mother. I will make up a pattern of sorts and share it with you on my one of my websites. I'll make a link somewhere. Probably um, it's going to take a little while. The kit for the, the studio is being delivered tomorrow morning. We're in the process of preparing the place for it. We're trying to rush against the clock to make sure that we get it enclosed before the rains come because they will be here very soon. So it might take a little longer for the pattern. And it will not be a conventional pattern because I don't work that way. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Not exactly sure when it might not, it's probably not going to be next week, but I will see you again soon. Thank you.
In fact, the kit for it is being delivered tomorrow morning. This is September 17th, or no, it's not 19th, it's 2014.